Now we go to someone that is joining us from afar, that will probably now appear here on screen. Welcome, Janis. I will, I will check one second if the electricity is still on, internet is working. Um, the police is not here yet, uh, but you might have to hurry. Um, but seriously, we had a serious turn of authoritarianism lately here when Janis was banned from Germany. And we are very excited that you can today speak to, uh, to us. I know that you're running a campaign in Athens for Meta25 there as uh, its leader, your DM25's co-founder, and we yeah, look forward to hearing your views on what's happening, has been happening in Europe lately and what our European campaign is about. Thank you very much and yeah, another applause and then Janis can give us his, uh, his speech. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Johannes. Thank you, Karen. Thank you uh, to every single one of you who happened to be either watching or in the room today. You know, running this campaign. I mean, you said, Johannes, that I'm running a, a campaign in Greece. No, I'm not running a campaign in Greece. We are running across Europe. This is the spirit of um, uh, transnationalism. This is the spirit of internationalism. This is what we do here in Mera 25, in Germany, in Italy, in Ireland, with our comrades Mick and Claire, um, in other places too, like in Slovenia with Violeta. Uh, this is internationalism in action. So European elections must be in the air for us to have gathered here, They're around the corner. And it is uh, incumbent upon us, since these are the European elections, for us to talk about Europe. The problem is that there is not much Europe left to speak of. Not really. The European Union's rulers, and here I don't mean Ursula von der Leyen and these uh, bozos, I'm talking about the real rulers, the oligarchs, the people who are pulling the strings, the people with power, the people with money. Uh, these rulers have successfully turned Europe into a servile colony, a sub-agent of uh, Washington, D.C., they have caused Europe to be falling behind economically, environmentally, technologically, geostrategically. We are completely absent geostrategically and, of course, ethically. At the heart of this, there is, of course, Germany. And I'm very pleased to be back in Germany, even through Zoom, through a video link. Um, thank you, Johannes, for reminding me of those heady days and moments and hours at the Volksbühne when uh, in February 2016 we started the, the, this, this ball rolling <laughs> and we're still at it. But unfortunately, over the last years, since 2016, things have been going from bad to worse. I remember saying at the Volksbühne that... Um, Nothing good is going to start in Europe unless it starts in Berlin. Because, let's face it, in, as in the Roman Empire, if you wanted to change things, you had to start, in, to start things moving and changing in Rome. Unfortunately, all those changes that we have seen over the last eight, nine years have been negative ones. And they have been proliferating across Europe. When Europe's steam engine, the engine that's supposed to pull the rest of the European wagons along, you know, the German industrial model, the German business model, when it is splattering and failing the way that the German economy has been failing, what do you expect of the rest of Europe? When the politicians have conspired to ensure that there is no political union, that there is no political solidarity, that in the name of solidarity uh, they commit crimes against our peoples, the result is this um, steady fall from grace of the very idea of a European Union. So we're here to talk Europe, but not to praise it. We're here to bury this heartless, hideous 
formation that has come out of this European Union, uh, this union whose rulers are hell-bent on war and naked exploitation of peoples and nature across Europe, in Europe's neighborhood, and of course beyond. We're here to tell the people of, the people of Palestine of our commitment to fight this European election on their behalf, as well as on the behalf of our Jewish comrades who cry, who cry out in Berlin, and here I want to give special mention to the Jewish voice for a just peace in the Middle East, our German comrades in Berlin, who cry out not in our name. Jewish comrades like Iris and Udi, who have been arrested, who help us expose Rusler from the lion for what she is an unelected lunatic, warmongering, genocide cheerleader, answering only to her true masters who are in Washington, D.C., not in Europe. We are here to tell the people of Ukraine of our absolute commitment to a swift and just peace instead of the never-ending war Brussels is planning for them on behalf of the United States. Especially now that hitherto peace-loving Scandinavian social democrats and the Greens, especially in Germany, have been absolutely co-opted by NATO. And we're here to tell our people in Germany, in Ireland, in Greece, in Italy, across the European Union, one simple thing. Everything should be different. And everything can be different. But nothing will change unless with our vote and with our activism, we build barricades to stop the warmongers and the oligarchs in their tracks. How could our message be different tonight here? I have uh, this great honor to be sharing the stage with uh, our comrades from Mera 25 in Germany who are demonstrate what it means to be a true internationalist German and true internationalist European. But let me ask the one trillion or 10 trillion euro question. Why is Europe in, de in decline? Why is Europe fast sliding towards this abyss, technologically, economically, politically, ethically? Why is Europe becoming a nasty, brutish, stupid, and therefore irrelevant for the rest of the world continent? Well, allow me to convey to you, to share with you my view, my understanding of the reasons behind this decline. For 20 years, we had austerity of the many, or for the many, combined with socialism for the financiers. The, this combination of austerity for the masses and huge quantities of money printed on behalf of the financiers crushed investment in the things that Europe desperately needs. That's why. Now, in 2019, as Johannes reminded you, we ran across Europe, in Germany as well. I was a candidate in Germany. Uh, and I really, truly enjoyed doing that. Uh, we ran across Europe with the European Green New Deal, the Green New Deal for Europe, as we call it. It was a magnificent proposal. It was quite actually um, centrist, in a sense. But you had to be very left-wing and very radical in order to put forward such a, such a, <laughs> a centrist propo proposal. What he talked about was 500, 600 billion every year to be spent on the green transition across Europe. By the way, Mario Draghi has come out very recently saying that we need 500 billion. What we used to say in 2019, now Mario Draghi has come out, commissioned by the Com European Commission, to say that. Well, we were saying this in 2019. The difference was that we had a, an idea of how that was to be funded through a net issuance of bonds by the European Investment Bank, which belongs to all Europeans, to be supported by the European Central Bank. And that money would have made such a huge difference in propping up and funding investments in green tech, green energy, education, health, all the things that uh, are the areas in which Europe is falling behind today. But of course, the ruling classes were not interested. But why were they not interested? Let's let's ask ourselves this question. Could they not see that their version of Europe was a pyramid scheme, that it would collapse? That when the many, the masses of Germans out there, 
I don't have enough to have a decent life. There will be no growth. There will be no good jobs, no future. The, the so-called Europeanists, the SPD, the Greens, the Liberals, the FDP, or on the other side of the French-German border, you know, Emmanuel Micron, not Macron. I, I'm from now. I'm going to be calling him Micron. Sorry about that. <laughs> Could they not see that their shenanigans were turning Europe into a colony of the United States? Now, I'm going to say to you that I think they could see it. They were not stupid people. Because it was not a mistake. Europe, Europe's decline, I'm going to hypothesize here and put this view to you. Europe's decline wasn't caused by its system's breakdown. But it occurred, the, the decline of the European Union, because the European Union system performed exactly as it was designed to perform. And here's the gist of what I'm saying. Back in the 1970s, America's and Europe's ruling classes struck a deal. I call it a dark deal after the fall of the Bretton Woods system. It's not a complicated deal to understand. This dark deal starts, is based on America's ever-increasing trade deficit. The trade deficit of the United States operated like a vacuum cleaner that sucked into the United States Mercedes-Benz's Siemens products, the net exports of Germany, of France, of Italy, of Japan, and later of China. Focusing on Europe and Germany. Germany's capitalists depended on the American trade deficit for profits denominated in dollars. But they couldn't spend those dollars in Europe. So they sent them back to Wall Street. So every Mercedes-Benz that went over to the United States brought dollars to Germany, and then those dollars went to Wall Street to buy shares, to purchase real estate in California and Miami, and of course to lend to the American government. Now that's the dark deal. America is keeping German capitalists rich and European capitalists rich as long as they send their dollar profits to America to fund the American state, to keep Wall Street liquid, and to keep American rentiers in luxury. And to continue to, to be dollar rich, German capitalists needed the euro to plunder poorer Europeans, like the Greeks, the Portuguese, and so on. But they don't want the euro to be dominant. They want the euro, but not as a dominant currency, because why? They don't want to co the euro to compete with the dollar, since their profits depend on the dollar's exorbitant privilege. You see why? Because their exports depend on America's trade deficit. And America's trade deficit can only be maintained if the dollar is the dominant currency. Now, this is why Europe's ruling class will back any war demanded by the United States military industrial complex. And that's perhaps the darkest aspect of this dark deal between American and German or more generally Northern European or European capitalists. So we begin to see why Europe's ruling class condone things that damage themselves. That took Nord Stream 1. We now know who blew it up. And it wasn't the Russians, it was the Americans. It was the American military that blew up Nord Stream 1. And the German authorities know that. They know this very well. Now, by blowing up Nord Stream 1, they inflicted the Americans a gigantic, gigantic cost on German industrialists. And the German industrialists know that. So the question is, why are they not complaining? Well, they're not complaining. Because German industrialists need America's deficits to line their pockets with dollars, which they can then take to the United States to invest. So even though they were not happy that America, the armed forces of the United States, and the Pentagon, the United States government, inflicted that huge cost on them, energy cost, by blowing up Nord Stream 1, what could they say? They were vassals of the United States and, in particular, of the dollar profits that they got from the American trade deficit. So, is it any wonder that they show allegiance to the Atlantic's other side? Is it any wonder that when America seized um, upon Putin's cruel invasion to fuel a never-ending war, Europe's rulers rolled over? 
is why Europe's ruling class, our oligarchs, would even send their own children to war, to the trenches to be slaughtered, or imprison them if they dare protest in our universities. Their hypocrisy is mind-numbing. They say they do not want debt, especially common debt, but they bend over backwards to produce debt for themselves and for their brethren, if it comes, when, for instance, you know, Olaf Scholz is proclaiming that he will spend $100 billion on uh, American weaponry. They say that they, ha they, they hate the money tree. They don't want, they're too scared of, of hyperinflation. They don't want the money tree to be plucked. Uh, but they pluck it energetically when it comes to spending billions on weapons or lining the pockets of the financiers who transport their dollar profits from Frankfurt to Wall Street. They scream blue murder when Ukrainians are invaded, when the Ukrainian land is occupied, when the hospitals in Mariupol are flattened, rightly so. But they consider the exactly the same thing, absolutely justifiable homicide, when the invad invaders wear Israeli uniforms in Gaza or the West Bank or East Jerusalem. Don't forget East Jerusalem. <laughs> they also liken Putin to Hitler. You know my view about Putin. I think he's a criminal. But they like and put it to Hitler to argue against the peace process that involves Russia because they want the Ukrainians to continue fighting forever, dying forever with weapons that they buy from them. This hypocrisy is not only a moral insult to the direct victim of war and genocide in Palestine, Ukraine, Yemen, Syria, Kashmir. It is also a clear and present danger for our people. Here in Berlin, in Athens, across Europe. Lies and orchestrated industrial scale hypocrisy is the starting point of internal tyranny and external wars. We need to expose it to save our people from despotism, poverty, and the insecurity warmongering that they are trying to cultivate, and they are cultivating successfully. Comrades, we're in the midst of a long slide to authoritarianism, which you know really very well in Berlin. The European Parliament elections cannot stop it, but we can slow it down. We can place some voices like Karen's, Johannes's, Judith's in Brussels, voices that will inspire Europeans to stiffen their lip and organize better across our borders. And on this, you have our word. If you send Karin, Johannes, Judith, myself, Claire Daly to the European Parliament, we commit to giving them, we commit to giving them the hell that they deserve, to expose all of them as NATO stooges, as enablers of Israel. We are going to expose all the shadowy salesmen of weapons of mass destruction, real weapons and financial weapons of mass destruction. We shall demonstrate to Europeans, NATO's ma mafia-like strategy. Because what mafia does, it turbocharges people's insecurity to sell them protection. That's exactly what the mafia does. We shall remind them of how the CIA groomed nasties. Remember Noriega in Panama, Saddam Hussein in Iraq, and later Vladimir Putin, who was the blue-eyed boy of the West when people like Jeremy Corbyn and myself were demonstrating in the year 2000, 2001, 2003 against Putin, the West loved Putin. Let's not forget that. They groomed these nasties, the CIA, NATO, Brussels, to use them later as an excuse to justify their lucrative wars. On Israel, we shall accuse European elites for centuries of rabid anti-Semitism that begat a century of complicity in the genocide of Palestinians, as if the genocide of the Palestinians can wash off the stench of the Holocaust from the hands of German, Greek, French, Italian, bourgeois. If you send us to the European Parliament, we shall ask them directly from the floor of the European Parliament. What did you expect we will ask them? Did you really think that millions of Jews could come to Palestine, where millions of Palestinians already lived, and create a Jewish state without ethnically cleansing the area? and turning any Palestinians remaining there into third-rate citizens? Will you stoop so low as to deny the simple logic that genocide and apartheid were baked into the Zionist project of a land without a people for a people without a land? 
whose flag you dare project on the buildings of the European Union in Brussels. We shall look at Ursula and her merry minions in the eye and tell them, no, we have no common values with Israel, whose values are closer to those of the South African apartheid builders, indeed, to the Ku Klux Klux Klan. Mass lynching, extrajudicial killings, dehumanization on the basis of DNA and on the basis of religion. We shall then tell all of these pretend Europeanists that Israel is under no circumstances a strategic asset for Europe, unless you want Europe to ferment never-ending wars against the very people we have an interest to work with in our region. And finally, we shall explain analytically the economic dynamic that kick-started the European Union as a cartel. Remember the European communities of coal and steel? A cartel. Before 70 years, 70 years ago, before this cartel morphed into today's war union, which now its rulers see as the only means of maintaining the European Union. Charles Michel said so a few weeks ago. So friends, comrades, citizens of Berlin and beyond, in uh, a couple of weeks, you will have a chance to vote for Mera 25 in Germany, for Claire in, uh, and Mick in Ireland, for Mera 25 in Greece, in Italy. Now, don't get me wrong. Those who promise you that if you elect them or whoever is standing to the European Parliament, they will fix Europe by legislating well. Anybody who promises you are, Promises, yet, promises you that is lying. They're lying to themselves, to you, or to both. So no, we're not asking for your vote so that we can, in the pseudo-parliament of Europe, change Europe for the better by legislation. That would be a lie. And we do not lie. We are asking you to vote for us so that we can be there to tear their masks off their faces, to expose their, lie, their lies, to gain information which to share with you in order to defend you and to give you weapons of information that you don't have currently that will allow you to work towards a better neighborhood, a better city, a better country, a better Europe. This is why I urge you to vote for Mera 25 in Germany, because if the twin authoritarianisms of the radical center along with the Greens and the ultra-right dominate the European Parliament, war will appear as the only policy, the only plan, the only potential across Europe. Mass migrant death in our seas and on our, our land borders will seem even more of an uncontested policy than it already has become. Humanity and nature will continue to be plundered by stupid conglomerates behaving as if the Mars solution of Elon Musk and Zuckerberg and so on is a viable option. Indignity will become further entrenched in a Europe insisting, as they are insisting, that energy must be distributed through markets, markets that are cartels, that healing and relief and health must be provided for payment, that education is a privilege, not a right, that fiscal responsibility means stinginess on social care, but largesse when it comes to ammunition and missiles that maim, mutilate, and murder. Freedom will die, along with the right to protest in universities, on the streets, in Berlin, even to speak in our parliaments. All sorts of freedoms will die along with the right to know what our governments are doing in our name behind our backs, a right for which Julian Assange, as we are speaking now, is being slowly murdered in his Belmar's cell. I don't know about you, but a few months ago, I never imagined it possible that the German state would ban me from Germany for an event like this one, that I would be banned even from speaking at such an event via Zoom or Skype, as I'm doing now. It is now evident that there are no limits to the lengths this Europe will go to silence you you. So don't be silent. Vote for Mera 25. Vote for candidates that will annoy the living daylights out of those ruling Europe, dragging Europe along the lines of the darkest of deals to the darkest of dark ages. Carpe diem, let's win this one.